Hello, I'm Brad Miller, um, and I'm here from the uh, Worcester Polytechnic Institute Robotics Resource Center and also a mentor from uh, First Team 190. Um, what I'm hoping to do here for you today is, is give you a pretty good look at what, it's, uh, what it takes to program your VEX robot and to get it ready for the first VEX uh, challenge competition. Um, we'll cover um, how to program the robot for the autonomous and operator controlled portions of the game as well as just general programming tips and techniques uh, to help you be successful getting your robot going. So, let's get started. The first thing you have to do before you do any programming with your robot is you have to make sure you have the right version of the master code downloaded in it. Uh, the master code is a program that runs inside the robot controller and kind of controls all the functions uh, below the level of your program. Um, it has to be there first. The version of the master code that you want is version 6 and it turns out it's really easy to download that into the robot controller. Um, all you have to do is start up EZC and click build and download and open the download window. When the download window opens, one of the options is download master code. So click on that. It asks you if you really want to do that because it's going to erase the program and erase the old master code. So just say yes and it will be in a directory called VEX and it will say VEX master underscore v6.bin. That's your master code. So just double click that and then it will automatically, if the robot is connected, will automatically uh, download the master code into your robot controller. When it's finished, um, you should see a message on the screen that says download complete and now reload user code. And the reason is because when, when you download the master code, it erases your user program, the program that you put in there. But we haven't done that yet, so it shouldn't be a problem. When you're all finished, just close the terminal window and you're ready to go. And it's probably a good idea to reset, reset your robot controller by turning it off and turning it back on again. One of the most useful things you can do to understand how your robot works and test it is to develop a robot map. A robot map is simply a schematic picture of your robot that shows all of the motors and all of the sensors and what ports they're connected to. Um, and it turns out that EZC has a really convenient tool for helping you develop this robot map. To, to get it going, you go to the uh, build and download menu item in EZC and then select online window. The, this tool is called the online window. To use it, you, um, to get it going, you first have to download the online code, which is done by pressing the button um, on the online panel. And if your robot is connected and turned on, the code will automatically be loaded into the robot controller. And as soon as it is, then you're ready to start testing. Um, what we want to do is develop a map of, uh, of all of the motors and how they're connected. So to do that, we just draw a quick schematic diagram of the robot, which is just simply a box with two wheels. We've got a skid on the front of the robot. There's a motor on each side of the robot. And, um, and, then, and also, looking at it from the side, um, it's a it's a horizontal platform with a little with the box on top and there's a there's an arm and the arm's got a big gear and there's a motor connected to it so we can draw that stuff and and then what we want to do is just fill in um, a bunch of labels that let us know how the how everything is connected and how everything works so you'll notice um, in this online window there's a there's a section which contains all the motors and there's eight of those and there's a bunch of sliders and each slider controls the speed and the direction of the motor that's connected to that motor port um, and so we can just use these to operate to test what's happening now before I start you'll notice that all of them are set to 127 and that's because uh, 127 on a motor turns it off um, now let's start with motor number one if we turn motor number one towards the red side which is bigger numbers then you can see that our, our um, left wheel starts spinning and it's spinning forward all the way up to 255 which is the maximum value and if we go less than 127 towards zero now we can see that the left motor um, goes backwards and will drive the robot backwards and we can put it back to 127 an easy way of getting stuff back to 127 very fast is just hit the reset button reset all and it sets everything back so on our robot map we just draw an arrow and, and then we label it with 0 and 255 which indicates that um, the robot will go forward with values which are like 255 and backwards um, with values that are closer to 0 and 127 is stopped and that's that's the case for all the motors so you, you don't have to really write that in and the other thing is that that left motor was on port 1 
so we can fill in port 1 on that motor. Now let's look at the right side. Now I happen to know that the right side is connected to 2, but you, could do, you can find that experimentally by trying these and seeing what, which ports are connected to which motors. Uh, but you should have a pretty good idea since you built the robot. Um, now in this case, if we increase the values forward, now we see that, um, that, the, that the motors on the right side with, with values greater than 127 um, now drive the robot backwards and values that are less than 127 drive the robot forwards. Now you might ask why is that different than the other side? Well that's if you think about it the motors are mounted in opposite directions um, one facing to the left one facing to the right and so they have opposite behavior. So we'll fill in that behavior in the motor map. Um, so we can fill in 255 and 0. Now the other thing the robot has is an arm and in this case the arm um, is controlled by a single motor and that happens to be connected to port 4 and if we do if we use values that are greater than 127 we can see that the arm goes up and if we have values which are less than 127 we can see that the arm goes down. So we can label that on our motor map as well um, and that will let us um, be able to remember how to control the arm. Now the last thing we want to check is that this robot uses um, line tracking sensors and it happens that there are three of them on here. Now to test the line tracking sensors um, what we do, what we have is the, the robot positioned over a dark surface, in this case our table, with a piece of white tape as the line. Now you may find when you're doing your VEX tournament robot that you might want to follow a line someplace. There may be one somewhere in the field that you want to follow and it's the same way. It's a dark surface with a, with a light colored line. Um, so you could look at the analog inputs, which is where the line tracking sensors are connected, and you can see that all the analog inputs, at least 1, 2, and 3, which is where these things are connected, um, when they're over the black surface, are returning very high values. Um, you can see they're, um, like in this case, it's, it's in all in the 800s, and the other one is about 660 or so, because it's, um, maybe, it's maybe not all the way over the black surface. As we slide, as we slide this over, you can see that the, uh, if over the right hand sensor, you can see that when the line is over the right sensor, the robot all of a sudden um, indicates a very, very, let's see, let me get this. Uh, when it's over the right hand sensor, you can see that that sensor is, number three is returning a very low value. It's now down to, the, down to 39. And as we slide it over to the middle sensor, you can see that that one gets very low and it's 38 or 39. And if we go over to the, right, to the left hand sensor, we can see that that one goes down to a very low value. As we move it around, you can see the value changing. So these things may be a little bit different um, on your robot than they are on this one. And you can even see between these three sensors, the values are a little bit different. But there's a huge change between on the line and off the line. And that's what you use in your program to be able to determine the, uh, which line, which sensor the line is actually over uh, from 1, 2, and 3. And, then this, and the, on your robot map, you can label it. And so you can see which sensors are connected to which analog ports. And you can use that later when you program the robot. Okay, now we're going to write our first EZC program. And what we're going to try and do is get the robot just to drive forward and stop on that piece of paper that's over at the other end of the table. Um, you may find that in the VEX competition, you're going to want to drive the robot and have it stop in a box someplace. Um, and that may be useful. So to do that, um, we start with EZC. We st open up EZC, and you can see the splash screen is here. And we have to first create a new project by clicking on the New Project button. Now, if you look on the left-hand side, you can see a palette of uh, blocks which can be used um, to be dragged into your to create your program and they get dragged into this flowchart which is over in the middle window and as that happens code is written in the right hand window that um, is, is the C code that corresponds to the blocks that you're dragging in. So let's get going. So we want this robot to drive um, forward for a couple of seconds, let's say two seconds because we think that that's a good um, guess at what it will take to get into the box. So to do that we take a motor module and we just drag it into our program and, and this is connected to motor port 1 and we know from our looking at our motor map that, um, that motor port 1 to go forward um, has to have a value of around 255 so that's okay. And then we drag in a motor module again this is to control the other side and this is going to be motor port 2 so we select motor port 2 and we know that this one has to be going um, 0 at a value of 0 or a lo less than 127 in order for it to drive forward so we'll just take 0 in this case and we say okay. Now what happens in this flowchart is that these blocks just get executed down the screen sequentially and, um, and until it gets to the end and then it just stops. So we want to drive forward for some amount of time, say two seconds, because we think that that's about what it's going to take to get into the...